open up and say, ah. Look at that. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good everything. Welcome to Tesla's Wild. My name is Colin. I hope y'all are having a great day. If you're new to the channel, I'm so glad you found us. I hope you enjoy what you see here and I hope you stick around for future videos. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your support. We are so damn close to 2,000 subscribers. We do have the 2,000 subscriber giveaway going on right now, so make sure you watch that video. Also, always remember there is a comment down below with timestamps so you can hop through the video and view the portions most relevant to you. Today is gonna be a continuation of the Siri integration video I made a couple weeks ago. Basically a V2 or a free version of this. That video ended up using a paid app called Tesla Remote. This one is gonna use the Shortcuts app with Apple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through the shortcut that I showed you at the beginning of this video, which opens both the trunk and the frunk. I don't know how practical this is, but it is kind of cool. My shortcut for it is something that somebody else did and I thought it was just hilarious, but it's open up and say, ah. So we're gonna walk through step-by-step step how to create this. This is basically pseudo coding, so bear with me. It's not gonna be the most exciting video. I do have these steps in the description below with all of the information so you can copy and paste the things that you need. I'm gonna do everything to make this as clear as possible, but you do need to have some slight understanding of coding for this to make some sense. With that said, if you follow the steps and use all the information that I provided, it will work out perfectly. Last note is you can use the Shortcuts app with the Tesla Remote app. All right, let's dive right in. What you see on the phone right now is the app that you're gonna use. It's called the Shortcuts app and it's created by Apple. And it's sort of a pseudo programming language with code blocks where you can control your Tesla and control a lot of aspects on your phone. This is not limited to Tesla. We're gonna start by clicking create shortcut and hit the slider bars to change the name. And we're gonna call it dentist. See if you can figure out why. <laughs> okay, we're gonna start by doing a text box. So in the search bar at the bottom, open it up and type text and just tap that. In here, you're gonna do your Tesla username. So don't type Tesla username, put your actual username like your email address or whatever you use to log into Tesla. This shortcut will only be as secure as your phone is. You have to store your username and your password so that it can communicate with Tesla and control your vehicle. This is the freeway, so you have to deal with it. Um, I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Hit done. Then we're gonna do a set variable. In here, we're gonna call it Tesla underscore username. We're gonna do another text box. In here, put your Tesla password. Then we're gonna do another set variable. In here, do Tesla underscore password. Next, we're gonna do a URL. I do have all of these steps documented down below so you should be able to just follow directly along. So what we're gonna do here is type in URL. And I have this on my Mac, so I'm gonna copy it over from there. So it is https colon slash slash owner dash api dot teslamotors.com slash oauth slash token. That's the URL that you put in there. Next we're gonna do a get contents of URL, expand the advanced tab. For the method, we wanna do a post. In the request body, keep it as JSON. And then we're gonna add five text fields. So for the first one, we're gonna do grant underscore type. Another text field, we're gonna do client ID. The next text field is client underscore secret. The next one is email. And the final one is password. Now, next to where it says grant type, type password. Under client ID, I have these down below. It is a long random string of numbers and characters that uniquely identify Tesla for both the client ID and the client secret. As for the email, when you touch in the text field, scroll over and use the Tesla username variable you created. 
under password, do the exact same thing and do Tesla password. Next, what we're gonna do is a get dictionary value. Keep the get as a value and then under key type access token. Next, what we're gonna do is another set variable. And this one is gonna be called access token. After the set variable, we're gonna do another URL. These are all down below, so make sure you just copy and paste those into your app. Next, we're gonna do another get contents from URL in the under expand advanced again, and we're gonna keep the method as get this time, expand headers, and then we're gonna add a new header and call it authorization. In the text, we want to do bearer, space, and then scroll over and use your access token variable we created earlier. Next, we want to do another get dictionary value. Keep the get as a value. And then for the key, we want to do response. Next, we want to do a get item from list. First result there. And then from the get, we want to do last item. After the get item from list, we want to do another get dictionary value. Keep the get as a value, and we want to change the key to ID. Next, we want to do another set variable. And this one we're going to call vehicle ID. So we're going to do another URL. And this URL is down below. Make sure you use the variable vehicle ID. Every time we do a URL, we always want to do a get contents of URL next. As always, expand the advanced tab. Under the method, we want to do a post this time. Under headers, we want to do the same as we did before. Make sure you choose the variable that we created. In the request body, what we want to do is another text field, and we want to call it which underscore trunk. We're going to start with the front trunk, so basically the frunk. Next, we have get dictionary value. Keep the get as a value, and then we want the key to be response. And then we want to immediately do another get dictionary value. And this one is going to be result. With both of those done, we're going to do another set variable. And this one is going to be called result. Okay, so with that variable created, now what we're going to do is an if statement to make sure that the frunk was successfully opened. So just type if, and then in the scripting, the first result is if. It puts in the if, the otherwise, and the uh, end if. These are just three logical statements. Uh, don't worry too much about them. So in the if part, it says input contains, keep that the same, and then in value, what we want to do is one. So basically what this is saying is if the result contains one, the call to open the frunk was successful. Now what we're going to do is move on to the trunk commands. So we're going to do another URL that is the exact same URL that we used last time. So this activate trunk Make sure that the inside of this URL, it is the value vehicle ID. It is the vehicle ID variable that we created earlier. Then what we're gonna wanna do is move this URL inside of the if block and it kind of gets offset as we can see there. So next, what we're gonna do is basically the exact same steps that we just did. We're gonna do a get contents of URL, and we can basically just copy from the other git contents. We want it to be a post, and then we want the headers to be the authorization with the access token, and then we want a text field with set to rear, and it will only open this if the frunk is successful. So we move that inside of the if block there. Next, what we're going to do is get dictionary value. Move that inside of the if block, keep the get as a value, and then the key, we want to do the exact same thing. Then we want to do another get dictionary value. Move that inside of the if statement. 
and this one's going to be result. And then we want to do another set variable. Move that inside of the if, and this one will be called result as it was for the from. And then we're going to do a final if statement to make sure that the trunk opened. So we're going to take that if and move it inside. Again, if input contains, and then we're going to type one. And then we're going to use a new thing called show result here. Basically, this just prints a text box saying, yeah, this was successful or no, it wasn't. So I'm going to move that up underneath this if, and we're going to say smiley face. I'm done. And then we're going to do another show result just in case it failed and put that after the otherwise block. And for this one, we'll say sad face. One more show result here. And move that in between this other otherwise and end if. And if this happens, we'll say sad face entire shortcut canceled. All right, tap the sliders and then we're gonna do add to Siri. So what we're gonna do for this is say, open up and say ah. I've already used this for my other shortcut, but uh, that's basically what we're gonna call it. That's why we called it dentist. Now we're All right, so we just finished creating our Siri shortcut here, and now I'm gonna show you that it works as long as you did everything correctly. I did go in and put my Tesla username and password in, so it wasn't just the generic things that I threw in there, but we'll make sure this works. Open up and say, ah. Look at that. All right, so there we have it. That's how you create a Siri shortcut with the Tesla API and the Apple Shortcuts app. As I said, it's a kind of pseudo programming language, but I tried to walk you through it as best as I can while keeping the video at a standard or good length. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I thought it was really cool. Uh, it basically negates having the need for the Tesla remote app. Uh, but like I said, it's a lot more work, you know, it's just where do your priorities lie? Also with that said, you don't even need to make a lot of these. A lot of them have been pre-made online and I have this in the description as well. Uh, it's a very long description. I'm sorry, but it's got all of the steps as well as a bunch of resources for you to read up on. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please smash that like and subscribe button down below. Uh, all of your support does truly mean the world to me. I can't thank you guys enough. I do have a lot of new content coming your way, so make sure you stay tuned, and we will see you next video.